Let's move on to the next one. Those three journals will complete the data entry process, except for the miscellaneous entries at the end. And that's where the general journal comes in. Now let's go through each of these entries to make sure we understand what we're doing. Stuart Edwards is the owner of this bakery. Is Stuart an employee? No. no. If Stuart wants money out of the account, what does he do? Takes a draw. Okay, and you'll see that come up in the cash disbursements journal. However, in entry A, he also is one of the people on the group health insurance program. So we're going to pay the premiums, which are $90. The company is going to pay Stuart Edwards premiums of $90. He has asked us to recognize that as a cost of the business. We cannot, however, lump that in with the employee's half because that's an employee benefit. That's the account that will be impacted by that. But we want to recognize it as a cost of the business. Now, we could also put it in as a draw, but he wants us to keep track of it for him. So we can do that. And I mention this only because oftentimes owners ask us to keep track of things separately. And we can do it as long as we break it out as a separate item so that when the tax preparer uses our financial statements to do, fill in the forms, they'll be able to see that item and they're going to have to treat it differently. Okay? And so what we want to do is recognize that we owe it on his behalf. Okay? So we're going to impact two accounts. Now, one is we owe that $90 as part of the group insurance. So what one account do you know we're going to credit? What's that? Yeah, count, count 345, which is group health insurance payable. We need to increase that by his portion of the premium, okay? So we're going to credit account 345, group insurance payable, by $90. If he were an employee, we would be debiting account 725 employee benefits, but he is not. He's not an employee, he's the owner. So we're going to debit a special account, account 726, just to break it out. Account 726, group insurance owner. Okay? That way, whoever does the taxes, which is not our primary reason for doing these, obviously, but it helps the tax preparer to know. I mean, if the owner wanted to, wanted us to, and he was using the company account, can he use the company account to buy his groceries? Yes. He could. He could, buy, he could use the company account to buy his groceries. Now, we would show it as an owner's draw, right? What if he said, would you mind just keeping track of all the groceries I buy at home that I buy through here? We could have an expense account, couldn't we, that says... Groceries owner? We could do that. Unfortunately, it's going to reduce the income and it's going to be unfair to the, it's not going to really show us a good net profit and he ought to understand that, but we could do it. Now, this makes more sense when you debit this group health insurance for, or the insurance expense because he just wants it to be more like the other employees to show us the total cost. But we can do it. We can set it up any way we want because he is self employed, okay? Now, the other employees get it as a benefit of being an employee. He's not an employee, okay? That's right. He's not a benefit. And on his tax return, it's going to go in a different line. It's only, de you know, it's deductible as, you know, they're, right now it's a big issue in Congress, but it's deductible. It was 50%, and it's going up now to be a higher percent. Eventually, in a few years, it will be 100%. Okay, so the, so the debit's going to go to account 726. Let's go to entries B and, entry B and C you've done before. Go ahead and enter in the accounts that you think will be impacted in entry B when we're setting up the company portion of FICA. Enter those, those two accounts in there. Now, we don't know the amount yet. We won't know the amount until we actually do the payroll journal, but let's enter the accounts in and then we'll determine if they're debits or credits. 
Okay, what accounts do you think will be impacted? Tammy, what accounts? Um, number 325 FICA payable. Okay, 325 FICA payable and? 745 payable. Very good, 745 payroll tax expense. Which will be the debit out of those two? Uh, payroll tax expense, yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, so when we get to that point, we'll need to complete the payroll journal before we get to that point uh, or before we can enter the amounts in. Let's do entry C which is to set up the company portion of the group health insurance. So, again, we don't know the amounts until we figured out what their half is, but let's go ahead and set that up, if you would, please. Set up the accounts you think will be impacted. Okay, what two accounts are we going to use? So we're going to debit account 725, employee benefits expense, and we're going to credit group insurance payable account 345 once we get the amount. We've got to get the amount first. Okay. Now, entries D, entry D has several different depreciation entries. We're going to depreciate each of the assets. So go ahead and record which two accounts for each of those depreciations will be, entries will be impacted. And the amount is given to you, okay? So you can go ahead and enter the amounts in as well as you're going. So go ahead and do that right now. Okay, the entry always looks the same. We debit depreciation expense because what are we doing? We're taking, we're consuming a little part of the value of these fixed assets every month. We're consuming a little portion of it, okay? And so we're taking it away and so we're, we're going to debit depreciation expense recognizing that we're consuming and we're going to increase accumulated depreciation. That's going to, accumulated depreciation is going to reduce the book value, isn't it, over time, okay? And so it's going to be a credit to 251, a debit to account 780. Each time we're going to credit the accumulated depreciation account for that particular asset. So for the next asset down, which I think is our machinery, it's account 261. And then we're going to debit account 780. So we'll just... It's going to be credit accumulated depreciation, debit the depreciation expense. The entry always looks the same, okay? So we're always going to be debiting that depreciation expense. Why don't we just credit the fixed asset account and lower it that way? Why don't we do that? Unless you physically dispose of them. We have to first physically dispose of them, don't we? Okay? Yeah, now then the last one item is for leasehold improvements. And instead of charging it to depreciation expense, we're going to charge it to amortization expense, okay? Now, I'll tell you this right now. If you were to use depreciation expense, no one's going to argue with you, okay? It's just more because why are, why are leasehold improvements different than the car, the company car? They're attached what? That's exactly right. At the end of that lease, who does the lease who's who gets the leasehold improvements? The owner. So we're actually instead of depreciating an asset that we own, we're depreciating the benefit of that asset that we bought. Okay, so it's called amortization instead of depreciation. A small issue. Okay, and one that I don't get too hung up on. Let's look at entry E. Entry E is to record the bank charges for the month. We were reconciling the bank statement and noticed that they charged us $83 for bank charges. It gets, bank charges get fairly expensive for commercial, for businesses. And so we're going to, we need to make that entry. Go ahead and make the entry you think applies. Let's go to the last entry. Now, this is the one that requires a little bit of discussion with it because we're going to discuss how, why we entered cost of goods sold. We entered everything into cost of goods sold when we did. Um, to understand this, to understand this, you've got to, you've got to look at the T account and what's happening in the T account for this particular business. Now, there's two accounts that we're working with. One was inventory, whoops, inventory, and the other one's cost of sales. 
Now, we started out the month with how much in inventory? Can somebody look that up for me and tell me how much we had in inventory to begin with? Okay, now that was, was that a debit or credit balance in inventory? Debit balance, right? 15201 So at the beginning of the month, that's how much flour and sugar and shortening and all those things that we had sitting in the storeroom. That was the value of them right there, okay? Now, during the month, we are going to charge the product to cost of goods sold down here. Okay, anything we buy, we're going to charge directly into here. And anything then that we have that changes this value is going to be adjusted at the end of the month. That's what this entry is, is to adjust that. Now we're going to use, in essence, we're going to use the specs calculation. But let's say that we entered during the month, we purchased just for... Uh, it's, this is not the right number, but let's say that we purchased $13,000 worth of product during the month, okay? We purchased $13,000 worth of goods. We would be crediting the bank and debiting cost of sales in the cash disbursements journal, right? So we got $13,000 in here, okay? Now, at the end of the month... We need to figure out how much we want to show in inventory. If we bought 13000 and our inventory went up, that means that we bought more than we used and more of it was left in inventory at the end of the month, right? If we bought 13000 but the inventory was less at the end of the month, then that means that we used more than we bought. We used up more. Now, let's see. The ending inventory for this company, and I'm just going to give you that number so that we can understand it and, and it will help us. Ending inventory in, it was 15039 So I want the balance. I mean, someone went out and counted all of that product, okay? All of the... Uh, flour and sugar and shortening, they counted up, they came up with the fact that the value of what was remaining in inventory was 15039 That's what I want my inventory general ledger account to be after I make this last adjustment. Now, what do I have to do to this account to get it from 15201 to 15039 I need to make a credit. How much is that credit going to be? What is it? $162 credit, right? And what's that debit going to go to? Cost of sales, okay? Now, why? Why? If you had less inventory at the end of the month than you did at the beginning, you used more inventory than you bought, didn't you? Okay? And so we actually, we used $162 more in inventory than we bought. Do you follow that? And so that's the reason why it's going, our cost of sales were more than our purchases. Now, where is this method? Now, before, what, what did we do? We, instead of putting $13,000 down here, what did we do? Put $13,000 up in inventory, right? And so during the month, our inventory grew and grew and grew and grew, Right? And then at the end of the month, we made an adjustment to inventory, didn't we? And we figured out this is how much the cost of our sales were, and we pulled it down to equal that, right? Now, how did we determine the amount? We used specs. Well, let's see what happens. S-P-E-C-S. -E Do you remember that? What's our starting inventory? How much was it? 15201 right? What were our purchases according to this? 13000 That's how much we paid for inventory purchases during the month, right? Okay. So then what was our ending inventory according to Stuart? 15039 Now, if we add up these two numbers, we get about 28201 right? 
And if we then subtract 15,039, what do we get? 13,162, right? Look at that. It worked out the same way, okay? It's just a different way to do it. Now, why? Why do we do it that way? Because in an inventory, I mean, they go out and buy shortening and flour and sugar once a week, maybe, or maybe twice a week. They're getting big um, storages of this stuff, okay? And, for, and, and generally, their inventory is staying fairly flat, right? Okay, throughout the month, their inventory is staying fairly flat. Well, if we're letting inventory build up like this, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, if we were during the month to say, how much do we have in inventory right now, it's going to show us a number up here. Okay? When in reality, it's probably more back what we started with, because we've used up all that that we've bought, right? And so what's happening is we're letting it accumulate down here in cost of sales, so that we can see... If we could pull a financial, we could pull an income statement out virtually any time of the month and have an idea what our cost of goods sold was, okay? And so it's just another way to work it. The ending result will be the same regardless of which method we use. If we put it in inventory at the end of the month, we're going to credit 13, then this would be 13,000, okay? And then we're going to credit 13,162 and debit the cost of goods sold account, right? So that's what we would do if we put it in inventory. We're going to make a huge adjustment at the end of the month and pull it down. In this case, all we're doing is we're debiting cost of goods sold 13000 and then we're going to add 162 for the final adjustment. Either way, it works the same way. In this business, it takes, in a, in a bakery business like that, it probably takes about 30 minutes to do an inventory. Would we like them to do an inventory every month? Do we prefer an inventory every month, do you think? Yeah, because it's more accurate that way. Because if they don't take an inventory, then we have to use a percentage of sales. And that's only an estimate. That's our best guess. And it could be way off, okay? And so when they take an inventory every month, then we can use specs. And specs is a very, uh, very good way, very accurate way to come up with the true cost of sales. So in businesses where it only takes a few minutes to do an inventory, we're going to encourage them to do that. Now, on the other hand, if it's a grocery store or a hardware store or a clothing store, it might be a major effort to do an inventory. And so in those cases, we're going to be forced to use a percentage of sales. Okay? Okay. So the entry is what? Make the entry for $162, entry F. 